On the Throttle is brought to you by sportbikerange.com. Performance Park, professional advice. Stamboli. Here we are at an AMA race somewhere in the continental United States. Mid-Ohio. Mid-Ohio. Um, with an attack performance, attack Kawasaki motorcycle, and you're going to give us triple clamps 101 for squids like me that don't know what the heck they are. So we so have them here on a bike. We'll have to keep it very basic then, is what you're saying. <laughs> very basic. They're made out of aluminum. Yeah. Okay. So uh, these, they, you have a bottom and a top. Explain kind of how that works. Uh, what we have here is a, is a what they, why they call them triple clamps. Uh, in, in Europe, they call them yokes. But uh, they clamped three different parts of the uh, front end of the motorcycle. with two fork tubes and also the steering stem that runs through the frame where the front end pivots on. And uh, what our clamps do, in, uh, different than the stockers, is A, they'll add rigidity, as you can see how beefy this is. And also, they'll give you adjustability fore and aft. And that adjusts the trail down here at the tire which is hard to envision for most people. They think we're adjusting wheelbase. In fact, we're adjusting what you call the trail number. Kind of like on a shopping cart when you have the wheel trailing the, the axle. That's the distance how far back the tire is from the point that turns, the, uh, what we call a point of load. So the point of load goes down through the steering stem and all the way down to the contact point on the bottom, uh, past the contact point, forward to the contact point. And then when you, if you lower the motorcycle, you'll see, you'll see that as the tire contacts, see how the bike sways back and forth? Okay, okay. Yeah, it's actually pivoting forward to that contact patch, and that's why the bike sways back and forth like this. What we're doing is we're reducing or extending that to give the rider feel or better turning or uh, better stability. So you can adjust all that by just changing this a few millimeters. A lot okay. Of Okay, right. so let me get this right. So you're drawing an imaginary line down through here to a point right here, and you're saying the contact patch is back here of this imaginary point and that's the trail number. That is correct. If you take a straight edge right across this and let's just say where, where our suspension pod is, basically where the, where the uh, straight edge would go, if you follow us all the way down, the point would be somewhere forward of your contact patch. So let's say your point's over here and your contact patch is over here. So you're adjusting that number, which is called your trail, by moving your tire forward or backward. So as you change your offset to extend your wheelbase, wheelbase, I'm saying also, but as to extend your offset to where it's more offset, you're moving contact patch forward, reducing trail, and making the bike, let's say, more nervous, more flicky, but uh, less stability, but easy to fall in, in and out of corners. And so that is, that is basically the gist of that. And what happens is, as you adjust the ride heights of the motorcycle to get optimum grip for the rear, you may lose or gain trail because you've changed the rake angle. There's three components to trail. One is offset, tire diameter, and also rake angle. Those are the three components. So those components make up the trail number. So we adjust one of the components here, and what that does is a lot of people lower or raise their forks. They'll upset the, the rest of the geometry of the bike, like the spring arm pivot location and things like that, because as you lower the front, you change your spring arm pivot, your spring arm angle, all kinds of stuff. So this will isolate just one location. This changes trail and nothing else. And so as you want to change your, your effort, you can just change this fore and aft. And, and so after you get your bike really close and comfortable and you want to play around with something just to make it change direction better for one track or make it more stable, just change this and you won't affect your grip and all those kinds of things. And you buy your aftermarket triple clamps, which come with these little offsets that allow you to do that. Yes, and we, we sell a variety of different offsets based on what, what application, because we make them for all, all motorcycles, not just Kawasaki's, Honda's, everything. So anyway, over here we have some clamps. Okay, so here on the bench. Now, uh, one uh, quick thing about a bike. So if I get a set of triple clamps, you, do you have some kind of basic numbers that uh, work like a range? Like there's a certain trail, magic trail range, like, dude, nobody goes that far that way or this far that the other way. It depends. I mean, different motorcycles they take different things, and also different riders take different things. Okay. Taller, lankier riders sometimes prefer a little less trail because they can muscle the bike. A little shorter riders prefer a little more trail. They carry more corner speed, let's say. So it all depends on the riding style. It's not. There's no certain magic. You may end up with one year on a motorcycle that has this trail number, 
Uh, like we found out in our Kawasaki, for instance, last year we used to run really big trail numbers. This year we're seeming to run much smaller trail numbers. And it depends on the tires, the construction, and all kinds of different factors. That's why you need adjustability. And you'll find the factory teams are constantly changing. If there was a magic trail number, it was designed to bike one way, and they wouldn't have any of this stuff. But you'll notice, like, the Ducatis have adjustable steering head, and they have adjustable offset, and so do the Hondas. And they may, but uh, with our setup here, because we have adjustable inserts, like some of the factory, factory bikes have, uh, we're able to change it and so you don't have to change your clamp itself. And it makes it very easy to change because you can leave your stem inside, inside the chassis. So you'd, you'd undo the bolts here and you pop out your insert. Let's say there's a four millimeter offset. You see how there's a fatter side and a bigger side, a uh, fatter side and a narrower side? You would take something maybe that's even more offset like that. Uh, very narrow. Yes. Very fast. Versus your, versus let's say your, your zero. These are all in millimeters. So you would change your offset basically, and that would change your trail number. You want to change obviously the same top and bottom because the stem doesn't can zigzag. Okay, so I was going to say, do you do you can you mismatch these and put a six and a four and get it to do something else? Well, that's that's a common misconception as well, and people think you're changing wheelbase, which you're not effectively. I mean, wheelbase fourteen hundred millimeters, and you're only changing it a one or two millimeters. So it's a very small percentage. But trails usually around 100, 105. You're changing it maybe one or two percent. So that's a much bigger change than the 0.1 percent you're going to get the other way. And like another misconception is that you can change rake with this and you don't. You, cha you change it parallel, top and bottom. The rake is done at the steering head, which most motorcycles don't have. The Ducati has, some Ducatis have, but not all of them. So this is a, effectively almost the same thing, but you're not adjusting your, your, your rake angle, just adjusting the trail itself. And this one is a top and this one is a bottom. This is a top, yep. Yeah. Much like what you see there, we have ones a little bit thicker there because we ran a different ride height this weekend than we normally do. This is one that's a little bit thinner, it allows us to go a little bit up and down. And based on what we get from feedback from customers, we'll design the clamp uh, thick or thin. Or you know, like if you go over the Jordan bikes, you'll see their clamp is something more like this. Very thick on the bottom, so they have a lot of range of adjustment. So yeah, they're used throughout the paddock. I mean, I think those Paradigm guys have them, the Jordan guys have them, we run them obviously, and a number of teams run them. It's a pretty common tool it's now allowed in our class here that, uh, that we use for tuning. It's just another tuning tool. But a fairly significant one. Yes, absolutely. The rider feel and feedback and turning is so important on these bikes now because they're all very good out of the box. To improve on that is you're having to do minor stuff, but it makes major changes on the racetrack. Well, thank you very much. This has been extremely informative, and we'll look we'll look forward to maybe some more in-depth stuff uh, in the future. I'll have to bring diagrams and charts and posters and stuff. Yeah, and some case studies where where maybe some things happened one way or another, and you you found oh wait, when we do this amount of trail, it fixed X number of problems or whatever. Sure, I can probably point out a number of different scenarios where that's been the case. Okay. Thanks for now. Sure, no problem. Thank you.